History was in the making when young Conrad Nicholson Hilton arrived in Cisco in May 1919. He had come to Texas to buy a bank with $5,000 in his pocket and the promise of financial backing. Recently discharged from military service, he had returned home to New Mexico only to discover that the family general store and the little bank which he had founded no longer satisfied the dream within him. He wanted a career in banking, and when a sage old friend admonished him, go to Texas, Connie, and you'll make your fortune, it was the word Conrad needed. He left for Texas the next day. Hilton's first stop was Wichita Falls, a town literally bursting with excitement and activity emanating from the flow of black gold from the Burke Burnett oil field. Accustomed to the sleepy little town from whence he came, Hilton felt a sense of exhilaration at the thought of having a part in this frenzied activity. However, his enthusiasm was dashed as he learned that there was nothing for sale in Wichita Falls at any price, and besides, it was too expensive for his bankroll. Moving on to Breckenridge, he encountered the same story. Hilton later remarked that even the drinking water in Breckenridge had oil in it. Undaunted, he soon left for Cisco, encouraged by an intuitive feeling that there he would find what he was looking for. And so he did, but not exactly as he planned. On arriving in Cisco, he discovered a town gone crazy from the boom which invaded the area when the fabulous oil discovery was made in nearby Ranger. Cisco was overflowing from the influx of prospectors and oil field workers who had flocked into the town. Conrad was delighted to discover that the first bank he entered was for sale for $75,000, but the deal could not be consummated without the absent manager's approval. Overly eager, Hilton wired the gentleman and to his dismay received the reply, price up to $80,000 and no haggling. Infuriated by the man's chicanery and in dire need of sleep, Hilton hastened to a sturdy red brick building nearby whose sign proclaimed it to be the Mobley Hotel, so named for the family who built it in 1916. Tall and stalwart, Hilton wormed his way through the motley crowd that jammed the lobby and on reaching the hotel desk was told in a brusque voice, come back in eight hours, this shift is full. A bystander informed Hilton that lodging was in such shortage that guests were sleeping in three eight-hour shifts. With a flash of intuition, Hilton reasoned that owning a hotel in Cisco might be better than owning a bank. By questioning the hotel manager, Hilton found him to be eager to retrieve his investment and try his luck in the oil patch. Negotiations began, the books were found to be satisfactory, and by the following day, Hilton became the owner. His first act was to reduce the size of the lobby and office to make room for additional bedrooms and a gift shop. With cooperation from his employees, he guaranteed guests a spotlessly clean facility serving delicious meals and attractive surroundings. The Mobley soon became the choice place in the area to dine or to lodge. Hilton's success was such that within five years he began buying older hotels in the area, refurbishing them, and building them into profitable enterprises. By 1928, he was building new hotels at the rate of one per year in Texas and across the nation. After World War II, he established hotels in major cities around the world, but it was the purchase of the Waldorf Astoria in 1949 that Hilton considered the crowning achievement of his career. However, his acquisition of the Statler Hotel system in 1954 was equally spectacular. By the time of his death in 1979, Hilton's hotel empire encircled the globe with 270 of the world's finest hotels, including the Waldorf Astoria, the grandest of them all, and the 3,000-room Stevens in Chicago, the world's largest. The genius of Conrad Hilton stemmed from his innate ability to dream and from his upbringing. A dream brought his Norwegian father to the stark land of desert and mountains, which would someday become the state of New Mexico. In the little village of San Antonio, made habitable only by the life-giving Rio Grande and the Santa Fe Railway, Gus Hilton became a successful merchant and an influential civic leader. He worked for the joy of working, and he taught his eight children to work. Their devout Catholic mother taught them the efficacy and the comfort of prayer. This regimen of vision, prayer, and work sustained the close-knit family through prosperous times and through the devastating panic of 1907. 
Conrad Hilton never strayed from these teachings. Later, when the Great Depression reduced him to poverty and the demands of his business cost him his cherished wife, it was again work, prayer, and vision which enabled him to rebuild his empire and share it with the three fine sons who came of his marriage. Cisco takes pride in Hilton's first hotel. Through the vision, hard work and prayers of Cisco's own Hilton enthusiasts and the very generous support of the Conrad N. Hilton Foundation, the hotel has been beautifully restored and converted into a multi-purpose community center. The Conrad N. Hilton Memorial Park and Community Center is a fitting memorial to the man who built a hotel empire and used its returns to benefit his fellow man.